So thank you for this opportunity to share some thoughts on the anniversary of the Day of the Child. And this is about promoting the development and resilience of young girls as they approach adolescence and beyond. And first, just to say a few words about Feminenza. Feminenza is an international charity established in 2000, active in 15 countries. And we currently run five global educational programs, Transformative Leadership for Women, Understanding and Managing Fear, Forgiveness and Reconciliation, trauma healing and gender respect. And much of our work is focused on helping girls and young women to navigate the many challenges of today's world by developing an inner resilience and intactness and building their self-esteem, sense of dignity and self-worth. So I'm gonna start off by saying something about the challenges that young girls face today. Statistics from all over the world show that there is a growing mental health crisis. Severe anxiety disorders, depression, suicidal thoughts in children and adolescent girls have been rising steadily in the past decade. And what's causing this? Well, there are a number of factors, amongst them war, gender-based violence, poverty, a world that feels ever more threatening, social restrictions that prevent girls accessing education, and the growing influence of social media. So just to focus on that one for a moment, social media invades every moment of girls' lives on an increasing basis. And without the emotional and intellectual maturity to be able to withstand the negative influences of peer pressure, bullying, feeling they have to live up to unreal expectations of physical appearance, the long-term impact can lead to low self-esteem, chronic depression, anxiety, an increase in self-harm and eating disorders. As an example, a recent study in the US showed that the age of six is when socio-cultural factors seem to start influencing body dissatisfaction. 40% of elementary girls want to be thinner. By late elementary school, with the growing influence of social media, 50% of girls are dissatisfied with their weight and shape and have developed pervasive negative body esteem. And another growing trend is to do with the increase of aggression in youth. Again, in the US, some schools and communities have experienced a rise in aggressive behavior, delinquency and bullying in recent years. And the increased rate is higher among girls and young women. Girls also tend to engage more in cyberbullying than teenage boys. And current statistics reveal that the average teen girl in America sends over 4,000 texts per month, along with hundreds of photos and videos via Snapchat and Instagram. And the pressure to engage in sexting and cyber sex are also appearing in younger and younger girls. So what can be done about this? Feminenza provides unique, non-formal education courses and workshops, which can help girls and young women from all socioeconomic backgrounds to grow the inner strength to withstand these kinds of external pressures, make their own decisions and grow their resilience. And this can start at an early age, between seven to 10 years old. As an example, in 2015, Feminenza North America ran a young women's leadership program for high school girls in Peekskill, New York. 
And this was to provide adolescent girls with specific knowledge, skills and training related to their gender and personal development needs, while at the same time creating opportunities for them to take initiative, make responsible decisions and thereby exercise leadership within their school and or community with addressing various needs. And by focusing on encouraging the development of their inner qualities and natural abilities and teaching them how to build a bond of sisterhood and support between them to counter any negative bullying, they were successfully enabled to become positive contagion agents to their surrounding peers. They became the change and each developed their own community project to help other girls who are struggling with issues of bullying or low self-esteem. And Femenenza also runs regular workshops on trauma healing and resilience in Europe and Africa to equip amongst others, traumatized adolescent girls with the inner tools of transformation to rebuild their lives and make more constructive choices about their futures. And in 2021, this will be extended to NGOs working with youth in Jordan, Syria, Iraq, Israel, and the West Bank. In 2016, we ran a five-day residential workshop for 30 adolescent girls and young women aged between 14 and 24, from the informal settlements of Nairobi. And these were all young women who had experienced severe traumatic events, including rape and other forms of sexual and physical violence. And the workshop was to help them build their self-esteem and resilience and support their personal growth. As part of a USAID funded DREAMS program, where DREAMS is an acronym that stands for Creating Determined, Resilient, Empowered, AIDS-Free, Mentored and Safe Girls. This is a program for girls in Africa. Once again, our workshops focused on helping girls identify their inner strengths and qualities rather than focusing on their pathologies. At first, this can often seem challenging. If you ask a young girl, especially one from a deprived background, to identify even one strength or quality she has, she will often say she has none because no one has ever reflected her qualities back to her or confirmed her in her strengths. So by going through a series of participatory and self-reflective exercises with their phones switched off, the girls were helped to realize the qualities they have already built on the inside, often because of the struggles they have gone through. And importantly, they learn to value this about themselves and each other. And this can have a dramatic effect. One participant, a deeply traumatized girl of 15 living in a hostel, told a story about her life on the second day. She described what she wished to break through and what she still wanted to achieve in her life. To describe how she now saw herself after going through a series of exercises, she used two words that she had selected from a garden of words. The words were resourceful and dignified. When we met her again in 2019, she told us that the workshop had transformed her life. She was now going from strength to strength and had recently returned from a tour of Europe to showcase her talents as a traditional Kenyan dancer. Another participant, a 19 year old girl, described how she had had to drop out of school at the age of nine when her mother fell seriously ill. 
From then on, she took care of the household, cleaning, cooking, and taking care of her siblings. She used to carry her mother on her back to the hospital every month and also learnt to administer her mother's medicines, including injections, on a daily basis. She did this for 10 years until her mother died. At the start of the exercise, she couldn't see any achievements, skills, successes or qualities in this. It took the whole group to help her identify the many strengths and qualities which had enabled her to look after her mother from such a young age. They reflected back that apart from all the skills she had learned to run a household, she had dedication, loyalty, strength, devotion, determination, persistence, courage, openness, willingness. And as each reflection was given back to her, she would say, I did not think of that. Later on, she described what we call the story that she now tells herself. She had been unable to talk or share anything to anyone. But now, with her courage, persistence, her resilient motivation, and being empowered, she's able to talk and share everything so as to build her future and make her dreams come true. Through the workshops, the girls came to see their traumatic experiences, not just as bad and painful things, but as their story of resistance, survival, and thus future resilience. And for them, this was an important message to take back to their communities and to other girls who are suffering. And they have now all become leaders and mentors for other young girls. So in conclusion, we have consistently found that girls who are survivors of gender-based violence find it almost impossible to access the economic and other support until their mental health needs are addressed in a compassionate and humane way. The healing of trauma and the enormous sense of empowerment and renewed energy that results from these workshops empowers the girls to live more self-determined lives in all aspects of their lives, including taking new initiatives to improve their circumstances. And contrary to certain established theories, which state that treatment for psychological problems should not be addressed as long as the basic needs of nutrition and safety are pressing. The evidence also from our previous work in 2010 and 2015 is that survivors see their mental health as having the highest priority and their mental functioning is the prerequisite for self-efficacy and meeting one's basic needs. And I finally want to conclude with a statement that was made by then Secretary of State John Kerry in the US on the International Day of the Girl, October the 11th, 2014. And he said these words, when a girl is kept from achieving her potential, it is a loss not only for that individual girl, but also for her family, community, and country. We know that empowering girls, keeping them free from violence, and providing them with an education is one of the best ways to ensure that societies thrive. By working together as a community of nations, we can build a world in which girls are not treated as property, chattel, or spoils of war, but rather as individuals with their own voice, talents, 
and freedom to realize their potential and contribute to our collective humanity.